Okay, now on this next one, right? A bit hard, okay? So every time I suggest students, right? Don't straight away start. Oh, you see, oh, income statement, it seems easy because I know the format. But please remember, go and settle your additional information first. Okay, because in this question, I found out the additional information is quite hard. It's not the straightforward type that you always do. Okay. Okay, now we have to do these two together. Why we do together is because you can see in the question. Okay, first of all, in this question, is it a trading business or is it a service business? The first sentence they already mentioned is a service uh, business. So please remember that the format for incomes, the format of income statement for service and trading, they are different. Do you know that? Okay, the difference is that service is much shorter. There is, there is no inventory. Okay, so no inventory, no cost of sales, then no need to do gross profit also. So you only need to find profit for the year, that's all. Okay, now what is the first thing you have to start off when you are preparing for this kind of income statement? The first thing you must start off is income, fee income. Oh, fee income is like a revenue. Okay, now why I say I want to do information one and two together? Because you guys can see inside the question, rent and rates, right, is together. You guys see this, rent and rates are together, so we cannot do it separately. Okay, now what you need to understand is that, okay, first thing, the annual rent is 16,000. Okay, so we know that in the income statement, right, please remember, in the income statement, right, we only need to record the expenses incurred, means that the, the expenses that actually happen, uh, okay, and the income that you should earn this year only. Any prepaid, you should exclude it. Understand, uh, any expenses. Any prepaid, you should exclude it. But accrued, you have to add in because it already takes place even though you owe it. Okay? Now, let's start for the first one. Okay, they tell you that the annual rent is 16000 Okay? So, this is how much you should record in the income statement for rent. Okay? Now, on 31st December 2020, rent was paid to cover the period from 1st January to 31st March 2021. Okay? Now, what is your financial year? Obviously, your financial year is from 1st January 2020 to 31st December 2020, right or not? Okay, so you can see they prepaid for like about three months. Prepaid three months. Okay, so what are we going to do? A lot of times students be thinking, oh, I'm going to take 16,000 divided by 12 times three months. Okay, this question a bit special, so please take note. Okay, the question say, uh, there is no accrual or prepayment of rent at 1st January. That means last year, Okay, there's no accrual or prepayment. Okay, now what you should do is, okay, you must understand inside this 26,000, wait, uh, inside this 26,000, it already included the prepaid one. So you must go and find out, you must exclude the prepaid one, all right? So that's what you know about rent. So you know rent is 16,000. Okay, now let's look at rates. Okay, so the detail that rates of 6,000 were paid during the year to 31st December 2020. Okay, this payment cover the period, okay, 1st January 2020 to 31st October only. Okay, then for rates, it will be different. No? Rates is what? There's a accrued, okay, that means you're still owing how many months? You only pay until 31st October 2020. Your financial year end is 31st December. So it's obviously that you're still owing two months. Okay, so we need to know how much is the two months that you've been owing. So they tell you that from 1st November 2020 onwards, the annual rates become 7560. Okay, so over here they tell you that from 1st November 2020, annual rates were 7560. Okay, so from here with this 7560, it can help me to find out the two months. Okay, how to find it? I know this is for 12 months, but I only want to find out the two months is how much. So by doing this, right, okay, you will find out the two months is how much is one, two, six, zero. Okay, now with this, what are we going to do? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is, okay, let me show you guys uh, inside the income statement. I know my rent is 16,000. Rates is 6,000 and then the accrued rates Okay, thank you for show for showing the notes. I mean, yeah. Okay, for those people that can't download it, please refer to here, okay? So accrued 
okay you must understand accrued right is the two months okay accrued is two months so i just found it already it's one two six zero so if i total everything together right i will get two three two six zero so this is the rent and rates that i should record it in my income statement okay this is the rent and rates that i should record for my income statement later on okay so you guys be thinking then what is the twenty six thousand for okay how about the 26,000? Why they still give me the 26,000? Okay, so this one we already done. This is for income statement later on. Okay, any question how I found this? The rent, the rates, the accrued. Any questions from here? Okay, if no, I want to explain about the 26,000 already. So you guys must understand inside this 26,000, right? Okay, it included the 16,000 and it also included the 6,000. And then you guys can see, right? After they minus the 16,000, which is the rent and the rates, right? You guys can see it's still left over with 4,000. Okay, what is this 4,000? Do you guys still remember just now they say that inside this 26,000, right? It also covered the rent form from 1st January to 31st March 2021. Do you guys see that or not? So the left over here, the 4,000, the left over here is actually the prepaid rent. So you guys can see, oh, it's so complicated. Okay, why still I, why I still have to find out this 4,000? Because in the question later on, they want me to find, uh, want me to do the SOFP and they only requested for the asset section. Okay, they only requested for the asset section. So that's why I have to find out this prepaid rent because prepaid rent is one of the other receivable which will appear in current assets. Understand or not? Okay, so I think I, I, I mean, already done settling the first and second information. Okay, so any questions from here? Okay, it's a bit complicated, but you, can, you guys can retry the questions later on. Okay, now number three, depreciation is charged. Okay, guys, this is a bit hard because you see again, three and four, they are related to each other. Okay, you guys can see when you sell one of the non-current asset, when there's a disposal. Okay, what do you need to find? Okay, you need to find whether there's a gain or loss of disposal, isn't it? Okay, you need to find gain or loss of disposal. Okay, and also don't forget that you have to look for what is the depreciation for the year, isn't it? Okay, now how to find gain or loss of disposal? Actually, guys, I'm going to teach you a way that you don't have to open a T account. You don't have to open a T account, but you can still find the gain or loss of disposal. It's a very simple one. First thing you're going to start is cost. How much is the original cost of your of the one you sold? So in here, we know that, okay, the information is on the fourth one. Office equipment was for, sold for 1000 okay? This equipment has been purchased for 1800 on 1st January 2018. So obviously, this is the cost of the office equipment, okay? So this is the original. I'm just going to start with this. Okay, now the next thing we're going to find out is what is the accumulated depreciation. Okay, so this question is straight line, it's easy, it's straight line. Okay, and then they tell me it's 15% per annum. So now the next thing you're going to find out is how many years you have been using it for. Anyone know how many years you've been using it? It was bought on 1st January 2018. Okay, you bought it on 1st January 2018, you sold it on February 2020, and there's no depreciation in the year of disposal. So actually, how many years you have used this um, office equipment for? Anyone know? How many years? 1st January 2018, um, you bought it and then you sold it on February 2020. How, the year end in this question is 31st December. So you know that you've been using it for two years. Okay, we don't include 2020, we only include 2018 and 2019, which is two years. So it's a straight line method. Every year is the same depreciation. So you can just take 1,800 times how many percent? 15% times two years. And then you can easily find out what is the accumulated depreciation. Okay, so by doing this, how much is it? How much is the accumulated depreciation? 1,800 times 15 times two, it's 540, okay. By doing that, you can find your net book value, how much it worth now, okay? So 1,800 minus 540, it worth 1260, okay? Oh, it's in the question. Uh, fourth information, they tell me that the equipment has been purchased for 1,800 on 1st January 2018. 
it's here okay the original price um, of the office equipment is 1800 are you okay do you know where is it now oh guys it's in the information for okay it's in the fourth information the second sentence the equipment has been purchased for 1800 on 1st January 2018 okay can everyone find it now it's here hello here okay can you guys find out oh okay no problem if you guys cannot see certain things it's okay you guys let me know all right so now what is the next thing you should do is that oh i found how much it worth so you know after two years it's worth one two six zero so how much you sold it for the first sentence they already sold they already said sold for one thousand proceeds of sale this is how much you sold it for so here's a quick question guys if it worth one two six zero but you sold it at 1000 is it a gain or loss is it a gain or loss boys and girls what do you guys think 